What's going on YouTube? It's Marcus and I'm back for another review here to talk about Greenleaf Season 2 Episode 12 House Rules. <clears throat> this show is, is, is getting really, really good. What's funny is, and I guess that's something that I need to do, is that when I first started watching the show, I picked up with Season 2. So I don't really know a lot of what's, what happened in Season 1 other than what people said in their reviews. So, I don't know. I'm trying to decide if I really want to go back and take the time to binge watch it. Or should I just keep going with where I am now? Um, I don't know. Maybe I might because I think as the show continues to uh, go forward and things continue to unfold, I would only know what's going on if I have watched um, season one. I don't know. I'll have to find time to do it. But anyway, so the Green Leagues has been busy tackling um, heavy issues going on in their lives and in the church. You got homosexuality, infidelity, and other secrets that are being kept quiet for now. Um, especially between Grace, you know, with Grace who, um, you know, she has this new passion with extending her hand to uh, people in the homosexual community that have been ostracized in the church. Um, you know, driving a wedge between her and Bishop because his stance on it is totally different. He feels like, you know, homosexuals will be allowed, quote unquote, in the church when God sees fit to make it happen himself. And if that's what you're waiting on, Bishop, it ain't going to never happen. The church themselves have to be the one to say, hey, listen. And, see, and that was the thing with when the episode started and Basie was doing his sermon you know the, the the church was feeling it when he was like you know god is love and you know god love everybody but then when he went on to say god loves the homosexuals and you know there's a you know um there's a place for homosexuals in the church you know that's when the people was kind of like um i don't know about that and it's kind of like well and even like skank said you know because Yes, we all we all know whether we whether you been to church or not. Everybody knows what the Bible states about being a homosexual and how it's a sin and what what what. But you know, there's things that other people do that are a sin, and they think that they keeping it in the closet or got it hidden. But you know, God sees and knows everything. There are plenty of people, them same ones that's pointing their finger and and judging the homosexuals. They that they, they cheating on their spouses. They sleeping with members in the church. They smoking, they drinking, they fornicating, they doing all this stuff. But when it comes to the homosexual, that's just, oh, such a big sin that God can't forgive them and God don't love them. And last time I checked, God loves everybody. Now, he don't love what you do, but the person themselves, he loves them. So I'm just really um, interested to see how the show is going to progress um, with that particular situation. So, you know, Gigi, um, like I said, Bishop kind of, he doesn't feel that. A homosexual should be allowed in the church um because like i said y'all remember that's the reason why they fired that dude carlton um but then my thing but then i wonder because they have that type of religion where they might preach against something but when it's something that's going on in their family they kind of turn a blind eye to or make it seem like it's okay because right like i said you know bishop don't feel like homosexuals should be in the church but when y'all found out that Kevin was gay, y'all didn't kick him out the church. Y'all didn't fire him from his position at the church. So what's why is it so different for him being gay versus somebody else? It's like I said, it's because it's somebody in their family. But anyway, so um, you know, Gigi believes that the time is now for them to have a place in the church, and it's the church's leader's responsibility to make that happen. Um, you know, her and Basie they share the same. Uh, vision as far as this moving is concerned and they're trying to move forward to find solutions but my thing is I kind of feel like he's going to try to he, he wants to let Gigi take the lead because if she takes the lead and then it falls and it blows up in her face then all of that negativity is going to be on the Greenleaf name versus his name um and also during this time, um, when Skanks was preaching, we, we saw Darius Nash in the back of the church, like kind of taking notes and writing stuff down. And then he ends up putting an article in the newspaper. So. She is. And so Gigi is in full support of, you know, Skanks is uh, of the vision. 
and she's trying, you know, to find her own way to serve in the mission. And at this particular point, she is no longer um, Calvary's assistant pastor, but she's taken over the position of the outreach director since Cal, uh, since Kevin is still in my because that was his job, basically coming up with ways to kind of reach out to the community. So, and it's not just Gigi's her, her newfound passion that's becoming a problem for Bishop and Lady May, but it's her ties to Basie and how he will use it. The same, they kind of feel like they're going to do her the same way he did Jacob, kind of, you know, once Jacob kind of, you know, got up under Skanks' his thumb, then that's when J Jacob kind of turned on the family, according to them. And so they kind of feel like that's what's going to happen to Gigi. But I don't know. I feel like Gigi, I feel like she has a stronger head on her shoulder than um, Jacob, because not only did Jacob have Skanks in his ear, but he also had Carissa in his ear. Um... So, at, this is the point of time where Lady May, um, you know, decides she wants to go get some um, dirt, if you will, on Basie. And so she goes to talk to Jacob because, of course, he's worked, you know, spent a lot of time at Triumph. And, you know, um, him being close to Skanks as he did. And even when, you know, at the dinner they had, you know when uh rochelle was talking about how you know she had went to skanks church but something about him seeing fake and phony and uh, carissa was like tell me about it and you know jacob was kind of like carissa girl you need to calm down and so i think lady may kind of took that as maybe she maybe she knows some dirt on him as well and so bishop and may arranged to have uh dinner at jacob and carissa's uh house where they hope to find out some information but they come up empty-handed you know jacob and carissa were you know tight-lipped um about what caused Jacob to um, leave Triumph. And, and and I respect that because nowadays we got, you know, whether you... I, one thing I can't stand is when I hear a preacher in the pulpit bashing another pastor. And, you know, whether you mention the pastor's name or not or the preacher's name or not, the fact that you are up there bashing them and talking about them, um, I, 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 just, I don't like that. Um but they did in, end up having some kind of, um, I guess they kind of got a little bit of tea. They found out that Carissa and Jacob are having family problems. And, you know, Carissa has been on Jacob's back about getting a job. And my thing is this. I mean, yeah, I understand. But my thing is, if you going to be his wife and, and stand beside him and support him, then do that. But last time I checked, you part of the reason why. He's no longer working at Calvary and why he why y'all no longer living in that big mansion. And, you know, I think that's part of Larissa's pro Carissa's problem because she had got used to the finer things in life living up in that mansion. But I'm like, girl, you the one that kind of put planted that seed that caused him to go against his parents and y'all got end up moving out the house. So, girl, anyway. Um, you know, they got things that need to get fixed in the house and they not making no money. You know, Jacob not really making that much money preaching because he's not really a prosperity preacher. He's more of a, a outreach preacher. You know, the money that he takes in from offerings or from his online donations, he uses that to buy food and stuff to pass out to the homeless. Um, you know, he's kind of at the point now where he's kind of like, girl, I'm getting tired of you disrespecting me and talking to me like I'm your child. But um, but Carissa has always been that way, I feel like. He also let her know, like, girl, you know, the way you talking to me now, you know, that was cool when I was out here creeping and dipping and sticking and licking. But now that I'm, uh, you know, trying to be a better man and be an upright man, girl, you're going to have to calm all that down. Um, He tells her, like, girl, I'm waiting on the Lord to provide provide financial means. And, you know, he's like, girl, I suggest you can do the same and see. It takes a whole lot of faith to, to 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 do things like that because you know you saying you waiting on the Lord, but you got to build this dude tomorrow. I just I don't know. I guess I, I I I I'm not at that point where I where I where I can have that kind of faith. Any of y'all that are subscribed to my other channel, of course that's gonna be linked in the description box down below. I kind of talked about how I'm I'm still at. 
at the baby stage, if you will, when it pertains to my faith, because I'm the type of person that, you know, I always have to have a plan B. Um, because let's be honest, you know, um, you know, they are the people, the church people always say, you know, he may not come when you want him, but he always on time. But on time to him might be late to me, if I can just be honest. So, you know, I've always been that type to like ha have to have a plan B or have a backup plan. But I'm kind of, you know, trying to grow on my faith and get to that point where I can be like, OK, well, Lord, I'm going to wait on you until you come through. And if you don't do it, it ain't going to be done. So during this time, you know, Zora and Isaiah, they still bumping and humping. Um, you know, she's already gave him the cookie. And now she, you know, whenever the, her parents ain't home, um, you know, he's over there. And so Jacob ended up coming home early and, you know, um, tells Isaiah, like, girl, you got to get up out of here and tells him, like, girl, you got to respect my household. You know, it ain't going to be no closed doors up in here because of, if that's the case, I'm taking all the doors off the hinges. It ain't going to be no closed doors, not when you up in here with my daughter. But I don't think he, well, he don't know yet today that he done already got the cookie. So after this, you know, after the daddy kicked him out, Isaiah starts growing distant and cold towards Zora. You know, she texting and calling him and he giving her the cold shoulder, not responding to the text, sending her the voicemail. Um, some people just don't like being put in their place. You got some people that like to do what they want to do. And that's kind of the type of person that Isaiah is. And that's how Carissa is, too, because after she got put in place by Jacob, she goes back to meet with Bishop and Lady May. Um... So this is how she starts. So she's telling everything like, girl, you know, talk about how skanks lost the money, lost the poker gang and some of the church money and how Jacob used a savings account to help pay basically pay off the debt. And, you know, Jacob got to keep the land that they were going to use to build the church on. But now he decided he don't want a church. He want to preach on the street. Um, And so at this particular point, you know, they. Lady May and them, they're like, okay, girl, we got they got what we need, but they don't have proof. And the crazy thing is, is that I feel like Larissa, I mean, Lar why do I keep saying Larissa? Carissa went and met with Bishop, I think, to try to get some sympathy or try to get some help. But little did she know, they was on, uh, Bishop and Lady May was only meeting with them to try to get something to use, use to expose Skank. They was pretty much using Jacob and Carissa. Um... So we find out some more stuff about um, Rochelle. You know, Lady May, she's she been side on Rochelle ever since she actually came in there and saw her feet and uh, bought, bought, uh, made that pineapple cake for Bishop and she was all up on the desk. And the fact that she's a lot more attractive than she thought, I think, you know, in her mind, she thought that Rochelle Cross was an older woman. So, you know, she goes to talk to Jocinta Butler. And so um, she basically tells uh, Jacinta, like, girl, it's a shame that, you know, Rochelle ended up having to leave her church about how she, you know, left because she had breast cancer and the pastor didn't check up on her. Um, so and didn't I tell y'all last week that she was messing around with that pastor? Because at this particular point in time, Jacinta, you know, kind of somewhat assume that Lady May knew about what was going on with um, Rochelle and the pastor because she kind of exposes, you know, a little bit of the details to Lady May about what happened. So um, she talks about how it's unfortunate that um, the woman is always blamed in situations like this when the man is just as equally responsible, which I agree um, they both should be blamed because she knew the pastor was married. He knew and he took vows to the woman that he you know, was messing around with. Um, but not only the fact that him being married, him being a pastor, period. I mean, just certain if you're going to mess around with somebody in the church, there's just certain. Now, if you ain't married, if you in a church and you ain't married, you ain't got no business sleeping around anyway. Let me just put that out there. But I'm just saying, if you're going to be messing around with somebody in the church, there's just certain positions that shouldn't be touched. You shouldn't be messing around with the pastor, the deacon, the bishop, the mother. Well, I don't know who will be sleeping with the mother. But anyway, <laughs> well, I'm just saying you got some you got some of them women on the mother's board that's just as freaky as them young things. But anyway, so. um, 
uh, Charity is still, you know, thirsty after Jabari, but she can't really tell if he's feeling the same way about her that she feels about him. So she meets up with him for the first time after the kiss and all that. Um, and so he brings her some equipment to write and record songs at home so she won't have to come to Nashville. He invites her to dinner, but at the end, he just gives her a peck on the cheek and they still make don't really talk about what happened. So she starts thinking that maybe he could be gay or maybe just not interested. Um, so that's pretty much all that happened. Um, so with that being said, thank you all for watching. Um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If I missed anything, y'all comment down below and tell me and we can talk about it in the comment section. Um, like I said, the link to my secondary channel will be in the description box. Also, my social media, um, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that will be in the description box down below. You can just type in Marcus Williams on Facebook and you will find me. Um, if you missed my previous Greenleaf recap, that will be in a playlist and the link to that will be in the description box down below also be sure to check out ashley miller random tv reviews lady nika james colwell and forge rocks they also review greenleaf be sure to check them out also um i will be back this week for greenleaf episode 13 and american horror story which comes on tonight i can't wait for that but anyway y'all i'll talk to y'all later